To become a licensed CPA, you need to do three things. Meet the requirements to sit for the CPA exam, pass the CPA exam, and meet the licensing requirements for the jurisdiction in which you plan to practice. Note that the requirements to sit for the CPA exam and the requirements to be licensed in a jurisdiction are different for each state. Now, there are 55 jurisdictions in the U.S., including the 50 U.S. states, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, Guam, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the Northern Mariana Islands. It's important that you check the requirements for your specific jurisdiction. So I put a link in the description section below where you can find information for each jurisdiction. Now let's discuss the requirements to sit for the CPA exam. Most states require that you have a bachelor's degree, 150 semester hours of college education, and certain accounting courses like auditing and tax. But every state is different, so you need to check with your state board of accountancy to see the specific requirements to sit for the CPA exam. Some states, for example, will allow you to sit for the CPA exam after you've completed just 120 hours of college education. However, you'd still need 150 hours to become licensed. You can get the 150 hours by obtaining both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, but you don't technically need a master's degree to become a CPA. I've had many students who simply obtained a bachelor's degree and took some summer courses to get to the 150 hours. But if you really don't want to get the 150 hours, you could just move to the U.S. Virgin Islands, which is the only jurisdiction where the 150-hour rule does not apply. In any case, once you're eligible to sit for the CPA exam, you pay a fee and send your college transcripts to your State Board of Accountancy. Then you'll receive a notice to schedule from NASBA. This is the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy. The notice to schedule is your green light to sign up for the CPA exam. If you're an international student, by the way, you can also obtain your CPA through NASBA's International CPA Examination Program. First, you'll need to find a State Board of Accountancy that accepts candidates from your country. Then you'll pay the fees and receive a notice to schedule, just like U.S. candidates. While you can take the exam at certain international locations, note that the exam is only offered in English. So what happens after someone passes the CPA exam? Well, the answer depends on whether the state is a one-tier state or a two-tier state. In a two-tier state, you'll receive a CPA certificate after passing the exam. The certificate means you're technically a CPA. However, you are not a licensed CPA, and thus you won't have the full privileges of being a CPA. To become a licensed CPA, you have to get work experience and meet your state's licensing requirements. Thus, in two-tier states, you only have to pass the CPA exam to get the CPA certificate, but you have to get the work experience to become a licensed CPA. Many people find this confusing. Are you a CPA after you pass the exam or after you get the work experience? Thus, some states have moved away from the two-tier model, and the majority of states are now one-tier states. In a one-tier state, you can't call yourself a CPA until you both pass the exam and met the licensing requirements. So what are the licensing requirements for becoming a CPA? Well, every state has different requirements. Some states require you get one year of work experience. Other states require you to get two years. Some states say your work experience must be in public accounting, whereas other states say your work experience could be in the government, could be in academia or private industry. Some states require you to pass an ethics exam, and some states even have an age requirement. Thus, it's important for you to look up the specific requirements for the state in which you plan to practice. Once you've both passed the CPA exam and met the licensing requirements for your state, you can apply for your CPA license. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can be licensed in multiple states. Now, once you obtain your CPA license, you're still not done. You'll need to obtain Continuing Professional Education, or CPE for short. Many states require you to get 40 hours of CPE annually, but again, check with your state's specific requirements. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like more information about becoming a CPA, I put some links in the description section below.